Sultan Bayezid zog victorious in civil war against little glory in the encounters of the Ottoman power with foreign enemies during his reign. Immediately on his accession of the veteran conqueror Ahmed Kedyuk was recalled from Atlanta to aid Bayezid against domestic fears. And Ahmed's successor, Hayreddin, unsupported from Turkey, was obliged to capitulate to the Duke of Calabria after a long and gallant defense. Thus, Italy was re relieved from the grasp which the dreaded of Ottomans had laid on her, nor was any lodgment of the Turks within her, her peninsula again affected. Bayezid was engaged in frequent wars against the Venetians and the Hungarians, and also against the Poles which brought little increase to the empire. Except the question of the cities of Lepanto, Modon and Coro, there is small interest in tracing the details of the campaigns of the Ottoman troops in Europe during this reign, marked as they are be a degree of veracity and cruelty, cruelty on the Christian as well as on the Turkish side. Which is repulsively striking. Even in the history of medieval warfare, the epoch of Bayezid the second is brighter in the history of the Turkish navy than in that of the Ottoman armies. Kemal Reis, the first great admiral of the Turks, signed himself Zanet himself under the prince and became the terror of the Christian fleets. He was originally a slave and had been presented to the Sultan by the Captain Pasha Sinan. His remarkable beauty and caused Bayezid to name him Kemal. which means perfection, and he was in use one of the royal pages. The first mention of him as a sea captain in 1483, where he was placed in command of the fleet, which bears it sent to ravage the coast of Spain in consequence of an earnest, earnest entreaty, which the Moors of Granada had sent to the Sultan of Constantinople as lord of the two seas and the two continents, for succor against the overwhelming power of the Spanish Christians. Kemal Reis afterwards in 1499 won a desperate battle over the Venetians of the island Sepienza and materially assisted in the reduction of the city of Lepanto. We find him also in 1500 contending skillfully and boldly against the far superior 
plates of the foe, of Spain and the Venice. The Ottoman marine had not yet acquired such an ascendancy in the Mediterranean as it afterwards held under Bayezid's grandson Sultan Suleiman. Bayezid's melancholy and dreamy disposition made him indifferent to the excitements of strife and conquest. And so, as a zealous devotee, he looked on warfare against the infidels as, as meritorious and so sometimes as an act of religious duty. He shared in the campaigns of his troops of his general policy was to seek peace at almost any sacrifice. As is usually the case with our Pacific princes, he was unfortunate enough to be ent entangled against his will in many wars from which his empire acquired little advantage, and he himself less credit. Besides his stolities with Christian powers, he was obliged to oppose by army armed force the encroachments which his which his Mamluk, Mamluk Sultan of Egypt and Syria continually made on the Ottoman territory on the southeastern confines of Asia Minor. The first war between the Ottoman sovereign of Constantinople and the rulers of Egypt began in 1485 and was eminently disastrous for the Turks. Their armies were repeatedly beaten by the Mamelukus. And the spirit of revolt which had so long smoldered in Christian in Karamania broke out and men set up on war. The Ottoman generals succeeded in reducing the Karamanians to subjection, but Bayezid, after five years of defeat by the Egyptian, concluded a peace with them which left in their hands three fortresses which they had conquered. The wounded pride of the Supreme Forto was sorted, sorted by the pretext that the three fortresses were to, the, to be considered as given to Endo and of the holy cities of Mecca and Medina, of which the Egyptian Sultan was protector. As Bayezid advanced in years, the empire was again troubled with domestic demands, the decession and civil war. He had made his sons and grandsons governors of our provinces, and as the sultan's infirmities increased, increased his the three surviving sons.
corporate Ahmed and Selim began to intrigue against each other with a few to secure to succession. Selim was the youngest of the three, but the ablest and the least likely to be deterred by any scruples of remorse from cutting his way to the throne by the readiest path. He was governor of Trevisant. His martial habits and bold readiness with tongue and hand made him the favorite of the throne. And he thought the Agarandis is influenced by making incursions into into the Kirkasian territory on his own account. When the old and pacific sultan rem remonstrated against this proceedings, Selim replied by demanding a Sanjak in Europe, so as to place him nearer to the central seat of government. The, he next asked permission to visit his father at Adrianople, to pay his filial respects, and on his being refused, crossed the Black Sea and advanced the Adrianople with a retinue of so numbers and well appointed that it deserved the name of an army.